tonight you've got the Cowboys and the Giants. We bring in Ross Tucker, our good buddy from Westwood One. He's joining us on behalf of DraftKings. He's the host of Even Money, betting podcast and day, uh, game analyst for CBS Westwood One and the Philadelphia Eagles. Let me start with the Eagles. Uh, any negatives there after three weeks? Not really, Dan. I mean, they've got a couple penalties that they can clean up, but they have a really, really good team. I think it probably started with their decision on the preseason game analyst. I think that's when things mm. started to really mm. take off for this franchise. Mm. No, Dan, you know, here's what I've been saying to people, because I do a lot of stuff in Philly. It's the best corners they've had in a long time. Best linebackers they've had in a long time. It's the best offensive line in the NFL. It's easily the best receiving core they've had in a long time, maybe ever. I mean, Devontae Smith was unbelievable yesterday. A.J. Brown's a stud. Dallas Goddard's a top five receiver. Jalen Hurts has improved way more than even I thought he would. They just have a really good team. Now, look, the playoffs are a long way away. A lot can happen between now and then, but they have a loaded roster that so far this year is playing very well. It seems like they're the most balanced team in the NFC. And I always look at offensive lines and defensive lines. How good are you? They got depth at the offense or defensive line positions. And if you throw in some weapons there, I mean, it really comes down to if they're going to be great, it'll be because of Jalen Hurts. And if they're not, then they might be good. Is that going to be good enough? Because I look at, Green Bay, and I feel like this is who Green Bay is. They don't have anybody they're waiting for, whereas the Buccaneers are getting some people back. Seems like we forgot about the Rams after the loss to Buffalo. Uh, so if you're looking at handicapping the NFC, are the Eagles the best team in the NFC? Well, what the way you just described it, Dan, I agree 100% with what you said about the other teams and certainly what you said about the Eagles. I think that they objectively have the best roster in the NFC, and they're up there in terms of best rosters in the NFL. So far, they've stayed very healthy. They've only lost Derek Barnett, but they had the best O-line. Their D-line had nine sacks yesterday. Now, a lot of that was Carson Wentz' refusal to get rid of the ball or throw the ball away, but still, nine sacks is nine sacks. There's no one that has a better roster than them. The question will be, how good is their record in terms of home field advantage or, you know, what seed they are? And then when they get to the playoffs, how well does Jalen Hurts play versus Aaron Rodgers in a playoff game versus Tom Brady in a playoff game? Because remember, it was just this past January, Dan, that he was clearly outplayed by Tom Brady. It wasn't even close. Now, he's improved a lot. And the roster has improved tremendously around him. And it feels like the Bucks and Packers and even the Rams have all kind of taken a step back and come back to the pack a little bit. The Dolphins, yeah, if you're going to script it, uh, don't think you could have scripted any better than what we've seen so far. It was a great month. They, made a, they may be the team of the month, but how do you look at this bigger picture with the Dolphins? Are well, they going to be think, right there with the Buffalo Bills by the end of the year? Yeah, I think, they'll, I think they will be. I think they'll be in the mix, and, and here's why. When you get a new coach, and I can speak to this, and I think this relates a little bit also, Dan, to what's going on with Doug Peterson in Jacksonville, who's won back-to-back -back games by 24 points. When you get a new ho head coach, and I had a bunch of them, you start to get rolling a little bit early. You, you think you're as good as anyone. You, you think like, well, now that we got this coach who knows what he's doing, we can beat anybody. So the vibe right now in Jacksonville and in Miami is amazing. And to gut through the last couple wins, the way they did the comeback in Baltimore, holding on against the – I think the Bills had the ball for like 90-some plays. The Dolphins had it for 39. I mean, any statistical measure – the Dolphins should not have won that game, but they found a way. Credit to their defense because I thought their offense would score a lot more points. The Bills were missing six defensive starters, yeah. six. So I thought it would be a way higher scoring game and the Dolphins might win like 34-31. It wasn't. It was the Dolphins' defense getting after Josh Allen, making him fumble. Ogba was great. Melvin Ingram was great. And they're really building something down there with Mike McDaniel. 
What did you see on the two a tongue of Iloa hit? And then when he got up uh, on his uh, on his two feet. Yeah, I talked about this already, Dan, as well on the Ross Tucker podcast this morning. It's a bad look for the NFL. And you know how I know that? Because yesterday I got at least three text messages from people that never text me about football. My mom's texting me, why is Tua back in the game? Even like our friends that live across the street, they're like, they never text me about football. I thought the NFL had a concussion protocol. Why is Tua back in? And I I don't have a great answer for them, Dan. I know they're saying that it was a back injury. Look, I'm on the Dan Patrick show. There's millions of people, whatever, listening or watching. I'm not going to sit here and say people are lying. Um, I would just say that if I had to bet on it, or if you're asking me, Ross, what do you think? I, I think it was a head injury. I mean... You're talking about a guy, I've had a back surgery. I've had back spasms my whole life. I mean, I've had head injuries. But they would have to conspire to give us a different story. Well, when they bring him off to the side, if all he talks about is his back and says, no, I'm fine, My, my head was fine, it's my back, it's my back, at that point, you know, my understanding is if the if they clear him on the concussion protocol, then they clear him. It really comes down to they believed that him wobbling was a result of the back. Because if they think he's wobbling because of the head injury, he's automatically out. You're automatically out if they think that that, that visible wobbling is a cognitive thing. I just, I mean, Dan, and I hope everyone's telling the truth. I hope it was his back. I hope it was in his head. Two things I'll say about that though. Number one, his head snapped back and hit the the back of the turf. He grabbed his face mask like that. Then he gets up and like shakes off the cobwebs. Then he takes a couple steps and then starts to get wobbly. I don't know. And here's the other thing. They're going to do an investigation. And at some point they will announce the results of the investigation. You know who won't hear about those results and doesn't care? My mom or my friends down the street. That's why either way, it's a really bad look for the NFL because those people saw what they saw and they don't think it was his back. So no matter what the NFL does to try to make everybody feel better about it, most of the casual fans that only watch on Sunday, that's all they just, they just watch the games on Sunday. They've already kind of made their decision. Well, you bring up the telltale sign to me is head snaps back, hits the turf, and then he shakes his head. He never grabs his back. You've had back surgery, and I've had back issues. If your back goes out or you have that you know, sharp pain, you, know, you wince in a different way. And then he starts to stumble a little bit. And we've seen players before when they get up, their bell is rung, and they stumble in the same manner. Heinz Ward once told me that he got his bell rung He immediately grabbed his ankle just to say to the staff and the Steelers, hey, I'm not coming out of this game, even though I got my bell rung. And they said, no, they had to hide his helmet from him because they knew that he obviously got his bell rung. I, I hope the Dolphins are being transparent here, but you can't tell me that his reaction was, oh, my back, when he's shaking his head, grabbing his face mask, and then he stumbles. That stumble is attributed to a concussion. Dan, I've had a lot of back issues. I've never once grabbed my face mask or shaken my head when my back hurts. That's just not the reaction. That's just not what you do. And I've had a bunch of back spasms and stuff, had a herniated disc, two herniated discs. I I never like wobbled like that. I never stumbled. So I don't know. Look, they're doing an investigation. Mm. I, I just, I guess my question would be, What's the solution then? Like, let's advance the story. If the player says it's not his head, it's his back, are are you supposed to call him a liar? They supposedly did. I mean, they still had to do the independent neurological exam, and he passed it, evidently. I'm watching the video again. it, it, It doesn't make sense. And you know what, Dan? More important than any of it. And look, it'll be talked about a lot. 
We'll hear about the investigation. The court of public opinion is what matters to the NFL. And the court, my mom, people down the street, how they feel the NFL handles these issues, that's what matters. So maybe they'll absolve the Dolphins of any wrongdoing, but then they're going to have to come up with something else where if a guy wobbles, he's out no matter what. Because you can't, you just can't have this. You can't have millions of people watching a guy appear to hit his head, wobble, and then go back in the game. It 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 does so much damage to how much we've advanced that topic. We're talking to Ross Tucker, CBS Westwood One color analyst, joining us on behalf of DraftKings. How are the Raiders? How would you feel if you're Josh McDaniels today? Really bad. Really bad. Because not only are they 0 for 3, they've lost three close games. And I've always felt like, Dan, close games, more than even any other game, are really a reflection of the head coach, coaching, the quarterback. And I think on some level, Josh McDaniels was set up to fail in the sense that, remember last year? Remember how many close games they won with Rich Bisaccia? Rich Bisaccia, interim head coach, special teams guy. They won close game after close game to make the playoffs. They almost knocked off the Bengals in the wild card round. And now you bring in McDaniels. There's only one 0-3 team in the NFL. And I like Josh. I played for Josh in New England. I think he's a really smart coach. But the proof is in the pudding. They've had three opportunities to win games late. They haven't been able to get it done. I blame Mark Davis. I blame the owner who, for whatever reason, Dan, thought he was too good for Rich Passaccia. I'm, I'm too good for this guy. Or maybe it's because Gruden had brought Passaccia in as the special teams coordinator. We had a small sample size with Passaccia. But it was good. It was a good sample size. It was the only sample size. There's no neg- There's no bad sample size of Passaccia. Why they wouldn't continue that, why they wouldn't build on that, is beyond me. And I feel like on some level... This is football karma. Mark Davis thought he was too good for Rich Passaccia, mm. and he's being shown that that was not the case. The butt pump, uh, punt, or the butt fumble, which one more embarrassing, and Orlovsky out of the end zone when he played for the Lions or Jimmy G last night? Oh, okay. So first of all, um, the, the butt punt is worse than the butt fumble. You know, I mean, Sanchez ran into the back of Brandon Moore, whatever. The butt fumble, I mean, he literally kicked it into the guy's butt. As for Orlovsky, we need to clear something up right now. I like Dan Orlovsky. I'm friends with him. I'm happy for his success in the media. But Those two aren't even close. Go back and watch <laughs> Dan. Watch the Orlovsky, okay? I mean, Jimmy G was like backing up and his heel or whatever – hit the back of the end line. Orlovsky looked like it was recess, and he thought the end line was no man's land, and Jared Allen couldn't touch him. Orlovsky's <laughs> running. He ran like eight yards, a yard and a half out of bounds. Orlovsky, that's – I love you, Dan. Not you, Dan, Pat. I'm talking to Orlovsky now. By far – the worst I've ever seen. People need to stop comparing it. Orlovsky thought he was in no man's land. It was like in the no touch zone. And Jimmy G got to be grateful that he did step on the end line because it would have been a pick six. Absolutely. He did not look good. Boy, that game last night. Whew, I, you know, I can't wait till the ratings for last night's game comes mm-hmm. out because that will be proof of our addiction. Like, that will be proof of, like, okay, maybe America has a problem now. If if 20 million people watched <laughs> that game last night, we might need help. We might need to talk to somebody about this because the Broncos had nine three and outs in an NFL football game. Not at home. Nine three and outs. And they won. Yeah. And they're two and one. They feel like they're 0 and three. It's one of the worst two and ones you can have. How about the Bears being two and one? Yeah. Justin Fields. I mean, I know that's Paulie's team. Justin Fields couldn't possibly look worse 
They're two and one. By the way, how are you feeling if you're a Raiders fan and like the Bears are two and one, <laughs> the Broncos are two and one, and you've got Devontae Adams and Renfro and Waller, and you're zero and three. It's what a bad, what, bad look. What happens tonight? One way or another, there'll be overreaction. The Giants win. That reaction, the Cowboys win with Cooper Rush. Oh, that's a great point. Great point. Um, I think the Cowboys probably win a close game only because I just can't picture this Giants team being 3-0. and If this Giants team gets to 3-0 and with another close game, Dayball will be like the anti-Josh McDaniels. It'll be like the, the the exact opposite because I've watched the Giants game. Saquon looks – but – they don't look that good. I mean, Daniel Jones, it's not like Daniel Jones is even playing better than he has been. They're just making that one play or two late in the game to win, which is a big part of this league. Always great to talk to you. Thank you, buddy. Absolutely. Thank you, Dan. That's Ross Tucker joining us on behalf of DraftKings. Also, he's the uh, CBS Westwood One color analyst and host of the Ross Tucker football <laughs> podcast. It's not good. I know. I love his energy. <laughs> 